Hello everyone. I like to be able to always have access to my home desktop computer. So if I'm traveling and need to use an application that I only have on my desktop, I would be able to access it at any time from anywhere in the world. To do this, I used to use TeamViewer because it was so easy to use. However, TeamViewer says that personal use accounts cannot be used to remote into a work or home office. Several users have been complaining that they are being flagged as using TeamViewer for commercial purposes. The reasons for this have been contradicting. On TeamViewer's site, it says that helping out a family member is fine and isn't considered commercial. However, users on Reddit have said that TeamViewer support has told them any outside use is considered commercial, even if it's helping out a family member. I have been able to use it outside of my home network, but I do get the error if I try to remote into my home PC from my work office. To me, it seems that TeamViewer is flagging certain domains and IP addresses as being commercial. Because whenever I'm at work, I'm limited to remote sessions lasting a few minutes before I'm disconnected. But who knows exactly what their algorithm is doing. Upgrading to a commercial account is not an option for me because TeamViewer wants, at minimum, $588 a year. So I decided to look for alternatives. And after trying several different remote desktop programs, I decided to switch to Chrome Remote Desktop. I switched to it because, like TeamViewer, it gave me an easy way to have a list of computers that I can remotely access without worrying about configuring my firewall. To set it up, all you need is a Google account and a Chrome browser. Let's go through the process of getting it set up. So let's start by opening up a Chrome web browser and navigating to remotedesktop.google.com. When the site loads towards the top right, there is a link called Remote Access. Click on that. If you're not logged into your Google account, you will be asked to log into it. After logging in, you'll see an area saying set up remote access. In that area, there is a download button. Click on it. A pop-up will take you to the Chrome Web Store that will allow you to install the remote desktop extension. Click on the Add to Remote button. You will be warned about what type of access to your computer the extension will have. Go ahead and click on Add Extension. The extension will download, and a Chrome Remote Desktop icon will appear on the top right of the web browser. Also, the Setup Remote Access section will be renamed to Ready to Install. Click on the Accept and Install button in that section. And when you're asked to confirm the installation, click on Yes. A Windows Security prompt will also show up, so click Yes to begin the installation. Now, choose a name for this computer. I'm going to call it Home Desktop and click on Next. Now enter a PIN for the computer. You will need to enter this PIN when you log in remotely to the computer. Click Start after entering and confirming the PIN. Another Windows Security prompt will appear. Just click Yes. The installation is now finished and the remote desktop service is now starting. When it says online under the computer name you chose, you are ready to remote into this machine from another one. Now. I'll set up other computers behind the scenes and then come back and demonstrate how you remote into one of the computers. Okay, so I set up two other computers with Chrome Remote Desktop and now I'm going to remote into one of them. So let's open up a web browser and navigate to the Remote Desktop site again. Here, you see a list of all the computers I set up. Let's remote into my laptop. I'm asked for the pin I set up for it so I'll enter it, and you can now see my laptop screen. So when I first log into a PC, I get this clipboard synchronization alert. With this enabled, you will be able to copy and paste between the remote and local machine. So click on the message. You are then asked to give permissions for this feature. Click on allow, and the feature is now enabled. So you see that the remote screen is pretty wide. This is because it's showing both the monitors connected to my laptop side by side. Let's go through the options to help change this behavior. To the right, you see a blue bar. These are the settings for this remote session, so let's go through these settings. First, we have the session options. At the top of the session options, we have disconnect, which ends the session. 
Next, we have full screen. This will set the session to full screen mode. The next option is scale to fit. This option will scale the remote screen to fit your local screen. As you see here, both the monitors of my laptop are being shown. If the resolution is higher or lower than the remote PC, then it will scale to fit your local screen. If I click on the option, it will only show one of the laptop's monitor. I prefer it being shown like this. The next option is resize to fit, and it seems to not be working. I tried multiple computers and it does nothing. But this option is supposed to automatically match the resolution of the remote machine to the local one. This is much better than scaling, because with scaling, you will get some blurriness because the resolutions of the remote and local machine do not match. However, you can go into the remote machine's display settings and change the resolution manually and avoid any blurriness, which is what I do. After the session options, there are the keyboard control options. This lists some links that when clicked will execute that keyboard combo described in the text. Next, in configure key mappings, you can set up your own custom key mappings to execute another key mapping on the remote machine. Then we have press and hold left shift to access options. This is a quick way to bring up these settings by just holding down the left shift key during a session. After the keyboard control section, we have the display section. Right now, it is set to show all displays. The other options are each monitor that is connected to the remote machine. This setting affects how you work with multiple remote monitors during the session. I'll show you exactly how later in the video. The next section is file transfer. Here, you can upload or download files between the remote and local machine. Below file transfer is just support information. Now, let's look at the very top of the settings. Here, you have an arrow that moves the settings bar to the left or right side of the screen. Next, there is the pin icon. This will lock the settings to always show during the session. When disabled, the settings will auto hide after a few seconds. And finally, the X will manually close the settings. Now that we've gone through all the settings, let's see how we interact with multiple monitors during the session. So my display setting is set to show all displays. And in this mode, you access your other monitors by just moving your mouse to the right or left end of the screen. As you can see, when I move my mouse all the way to the right, it started scrolling to my other remote monitor. When moving the mouse to the other side, I get back to the other monitor. I do not like this behavior because I keep scrolling when I accidentally move my mouse to either end of the screen. To change this behavior, let's go back to the settings. If you notice to the right hand side and in the middle, there is a transparent blue icon. Click on the icon to get back to the settings or hold down the left shift key if you enable that option. In the display section, click on the drop down and select the monitor you want the session to show. With that set, it will no longer automatically scroll when you move the mouse to either end of the screen. However, when you want to switch between each monitor, you will have to go back to the settings and select the specific monitor you want. Besides this, you just use the remote machine as you normally would when physically connected to it. So those of you who do not like Team Viewer's time limits for free accounts, you can now switch to Chrome Remote Desktop and not have any time limits. Team Viewer might still be a great option for businesses, but for consumers, it's really not worth paying $588 per year when there are free options available. So what do you think about Chrome Remote Desktop? Do you feel it's a good option for you? Do you use any other remote desktop programs? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. And if you haven't yet done so, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you, and I'll speak to you next time.